This cricket has been chirping for over a week now. It's in the wall. When will it die? Oh, hey, Kiara. It's been a minute since you've been in a video. <laughs> oh, hey, Kita. It's been a minute since you've been in a video. Hi. Hello. I love you. Shake, 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 shake. Hello, and welcome back to my channel. Um, do you, what, what's the problem? Um, do you have something to say, Star? Star, you got an itchy ear? I scratch. You okay now? High five? Oh, all right. Well, hello. It's really hard living in this room. It is really cramped. There's really no way for it to be like crystal clean. Crystal clear is the correct term, but I just made up my own. Crystal clean. Yeah, there's no way for this room to be clear, clean. I can't talk. There's just too much going on in it. I can make it decent, but not, not sparkling. So today's video is what the title says it is. I'm trying to get my, my hair, my, these things, I'm trying to get them in the, in the shot. They are so beautifully dubbed, um, on the website. Hair sticks. Yeah. Um, five dollars, ladies and gentlemen, for these sticks in my hair. This video is feeding all of my pets. So it's basically an intro back into which animals I do own and which animals I don't own anymore. While I was in rehab, I did rehome like 12 of them. Yeah. Basically, if you don't see the animal in this video, it was rehomed. Now, it was really, really hard to choose which animals I'm gonna get to keep and which animals I'm going to get rid of, but basically I decided to make the choices off of which ones seemed the easiest for uh, other people to take care of while I was away. You see, while I was in rehab, they were debating keeping me for 90 more days after the 30 days. They wanted me to go to an extended care program out in Colorado. I ultimately chose that I didn't want to be away from my animals and my family that long, and so I chose to not do the program, but I didn't really decide that until like four days before I left rehab. So when it was still like the second week and someone else was in charge of taking care of my animals, which is ultimately my parents, my assistants that were used to coming already, and someone that my parents found, which was an owner of a rescue. The guy from the rescue only came every so often, so it was almost ultimately mainly my parents. My assistant was out of town. It was a big mess. I had to try to write little notes and mail them to my parents and call them over the phone and give them instructions on how to care for my animals because I was just swept up and took to rehab and it ultimately was very scary for me and stressful about what the heck is going on with my animals. So I decided the most trickiest animals were going to be rehomed or any that were causing any problems whatsoever that aren't necessarily hard to care for but were just being problematic like if they were refusing food or if they were escape artists or things like that. That's kind of how I made my decisions. My parents ultimately wanted me to try to size down as much as humanly possible so I tried to make the list as big as I possibly could. It even came down to choosing between different snakes like which snakes are super picky eaters. I rehomed those and the ones that aren't super picky eaters I kept those. Yeah it was really 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 hard to choose. I cry about it all the time still. I miss my other animals. I do. But, but if we go back to my video where I disclose my addiction and the whole story behind it I do mention that time period when I went and I got an abundance of animals extremely extremely fast and how dangerous that was and I'm not gonna lie after all those animals it started to get overwhelming now if I was at my absolute peak health I really don't think I would have a problem with that many animals whatsoever I'm in recovery right now I'm going to IOP and meetings and doctors and therapists and psychiatrists and I'm very consumed in my recovery right now. I'm trying to take it as seriously as I possibly can. And because of that, I don't think it's the right time to have 30 something animals. If you guys know, I used to have two display cages. Basically, I narrowed it down to having one instead of two. And then whatever other cages could not fit in this room, there was only so much room I had out there. So I had to pick and choose which animals I was gonna keep beyond that. So yeah, we're gonna go through and feed all my animals. Uh, let's try to focus on the positive and not just be all sad over which animals are gone because trust me, I'm fully aware of how sad it is that some of these guys aren't gonna be featured in this video. Anyway, for the animals I do still have and love with all my heart, I'm gonna show you guys how I feed them and you get to see all their faces and see how they're doing. So thank you guys so much for clicking on this video and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to uh, feed the snakes, which is under this uh, 
garlic gym trash. Oh, that was elegant. For the snakes, since I have a couple of snakes, it's not just like a few little dead rats in the fridge or whatever. I have, I have a, a bunch, or the freezer, sorry. I have a bunch. So I have this beautiful freezer just eloquently sitting in here. But yeah, it's a uh, full up, <laughs> what? <laughs> Who in the world <laughs> put french fries in here? My french fries and my gluten-free pizza wraps are just casually sitting with my dead rats. I don't know who did that. Anyway, all my dead rats are in here. We're gonna go through them and find the right sizes for the snakes. This is a little container I used to warm them up. I don't know why it's in the freezer. That kind of goes against the whole fact that it warms them up, but all right. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna warm up some water and the rats are going to sit in there until they thaw. Let's do this. Uh. And something I do because I don't like to waste Ziploc baggies, so I do put the rats directly into the water. So I get some Repta Safe and I put it in here. This makes the water safe for the snakes, so whatever water is on the rats is okay for the snakes to consume. Okay, I'm actually warming up the water a little bit more, so while that warms up, let's go ahead and get all of the rats out that I will be using today. we wait. We will check back in about 15 to 20 minutes and then we'll probably warm it up again and then give it another 15 and then we'll be good to go. All right next up I am going to gut load all of the rice. 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 I just combined the words mouse and rat together. We are going to be gut loading all the rats and mice with a multivitamin so the snakes get a good source of all the vitamins that they need. So I'm going to, um, I don't want to inject them, so instead we're gonna be using these little syringes and we're gonna be sticking it right down their throat. All right, so now we're gonna go through all of the snakes and see who's hungry and who's not today. Some of these guys are in shed, so they won't be hungry, but most of them should be. So here's Duck, we're gonna start with her. I know she is actually in shed, but that does not mean that she will not eat. She sometimes will, it actually might look like she's done. I actually think she's done shedding. Today, we're gonna give her two rat pups because we are out of small rats. So let's give her what she wants. There's one, and I'll come back and give her a second in just a little bit. If I can slide this off, that'd be cool. All right, next up we have Tofu. Let's see where he is today. Oh, I found him. This is Tofu. I don't know if you guys know him much on my channel yet, but he has become a star in his own way on my Twitter chan or my Twitter account. Here's just a few pictures of him I've posted on there. He is amazing and awesome and I love him so much. He's one of my newer snakes, but I still got him uh, last October. I haven't gotten really new animals in a long time. I think in the last eight to nine months, I've gotten honestly two animals. One of them was a little more recently. I did get a new snake after rehab, but it was a rescue that I wasn't planning on doing, but we'll get to that later. Um, this is Tofu. He's a little upset right now. That's why he's bending back like this, he's trying to look really scary and big, but he's tiny right now. But we're gonna feed him. Um, I can tell he's hungry and we're gonna give him his meal. Hopefully it goes better than the last time I recorded feeding him, which was actually kind of funny. He mistaked himself for a pinky and I had to intervene and help a little bit. So yeah, let's go ahead and feed him. Here you go, buddy. Oh, nope, you didn't get it, you didn't get it. Come over here. No, you didn't get it again. You didn't get it again. You just keep striking like you're mad. I don't think he recognizes that it's food. So right now he's doing kind of like the defense thing, like the not the I'm hungry thing, but the I'm angry thing. There we go. That's the food response I'm looking for. All right, now we're gonna leave him alone to consume his meal. All right, who's next? All right, Gemini is next. Hey Gemini, how you doing, Bubba's Gemini, again, normally gets a small but we are, uh, the small rat today is going to go to Violet because Violet did not eat last week, so I suspect she's hungry. So he's gonna get two rat pups also. Just give him a second, he'll come around. Oh, he missed. Oh, he missed. He's trying real hard. Oh, he missed again. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. 
Oh, there we go. Success. And I will come back to give him a second one. This one has a big boy in it that I am waiting for his cage to get here to upgrade him. He's going in a much bigger cage than this because he's a big boy. He is getting a medium rat today. Oh, well, maybe not. He has a very good food response, so normally he's already eating. Like, he'll strike the second I open the cage. So he might not be hungry today. I can't really tell. Mm, maybe. Oh, yep, he's hungry. Oh, yep, there we go. Next up we have Frank. Don't know where he is. There he is. Two rat pups for him. Is that a rat pup? No, that's a baby mouse. That's a mouse. Rat pup. <laughs> Two rat pups for him. Nope, there we go. Come back and give him a second in a minute. This is why you don't want to feed, oh, nothing's in there. This is why you don't want to feed <laughs> two or more. You really want to try to stick to one, one prey size. You can go up to two if they're still too uh, small to get the next size up. But once they're eating two, if they're still hungry, you absolutely need to size up. You cannot be giving them three different bodies to digest. That's just too hard. Here we have my new guy. His name is Motley. He is in a shed, so I don't know if he's going to be eating today. But we will test it out. Let me open this. All right, he's back there. I'm trying to get it back there, but it's really hard. Now, Motley is a spider morph, which means he'll probably develop a pretty noticeable wobble when he gets older. I really do not support the breeding of these guys. He is a rescue. He looks like he might want to eat. I can't really tell to be quite honest. But I'm going to give him a I'm going to give him a chance. There we go. <laughs> Good job, baby. All right. Goodbye. All right, next up is Lego, who is right here. Hey, Lego. Oh, you are out of focus. Focus on me. There we go. All right. Um, he'll be getting two rat pups also. This is why I need um more small rats. Most of my snakes right now are on small rats. Look how gently he's taking this. <laughs> All right then, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> That was the kindest way to take <laughs> to take a rat. All right. Oh, Salem's ready. Hey, Salem. Here we go. You gonna eat it? You want it or no? He might not be hungry today, which is a shocker. I'm gonna leave his rat pup right up front and give him the opportunity to come eat it if he decides to. All right. Next up, we have Celia. Celia Bobilia. Do you want one? No. You angry? Not hungry? I honestly cannot tell. Okay. Goodbye. That was a pretty angry response. I'm gonna leave it right here in case she wants it. I'm gonna clean out her water bowl. Alrighty then. Almost all the snakes ate over here. Alright, next up is Violet. She's the one that's getting the small mouse because she did not eat last week, so I wanted to give her the bigger meal of what I had left available. Oh well, if it's blurry, my bad. Come on. There we go. Alright, next up we have Maui who's going through a pretty pretty big shed right now, but I'm gonna see if he wants to eat. Probably won't want to eat because he's shedding, but I felt like I'd offer it anyway. A lot of snakes do not like to eat when they're shedding or when they're about to shed, but I felt like I would offer it. He has an amazing hunger response, so I was about to say I don't think he's hungry, but never mind. Alright, let's put this back on top and leave him alone. Alright, or not. Let's, let's move it this way. I don't know how to do this. We'll just leave him alone. Let him do his thing. <laughs> Alright, next up we have Sabor, who is getting his lovely green coloration in. If I can get that hood off. There we go. Let's see how he's doing. Hey, Sabor. Hey, Sabor. It smells like poop. Did you poop somewhere? I gotta clean up your poop. Here. Oh, you missed. Oh, kinda missed. Nope. Nope. You having a hard time, buddy? There we go. Alright. See you later. All right, I'm gonna make my rounds back up the tanks, see if anyone's put out their food, and otherwise just feed the guys that did get the only uh, half size meal today. So the ones that got their rat pups, they're getting a second one. Let me see if she's done eating. Yeah, she's done, and I'm sure she's still hungry, so. Second meal. Yep, Tofu, how you doing? You already finished? You eat so quick. But yo, you thick right now, Tofu. You thick. Look how thick. You feel good, huh? You thick. I see that tongue. Look at you, boy. Look at you. You so thick. All right, moving on. Gemini is still eating. All right, he's going to get his second one. All right, see you later. And then I'm just going to keep going up. So you guys get the point. That is how my snakes are fed. Looks like Salem did go ahead and take his food. He is circling around it right now, being very dramatic. Anyway, he's eating. Only one that has not eaten yet is Celia. 
All right, so first up on my Blue Tongue Skinks and my Bearded Dragons list is their Reptilinks. Now this is uh, an omnivore diet. It's 50% protein, 50% fruits and veggies, and it's all mashed together in a big old sausage. So we're gonna cut this up and put it in both of their meals, and then I'm gonna be adding a bunch of fruits and veggies. So I will show you the final product because this does require both my hands. All right, 50 years later, we have a bunch of fruits and vegetables, uh, more vegetables than fruit. This is Bindi's and there's an earthworm on top. She loves earthworms and it is sprinkled with calcium. Same thing goes for Twisty, a bunch of fruits and vegetables, more vegetables than fruit, and then that meat in the middle. There is a few uh, mealworms on top of Twisty's food and that is really just to get him going. He likes to see him wiggle around. He gets excited about it, so that makes him really want to eat it. And then this is Bindi's. How about your food? Did you see it wiggle? You see it wiggle? That's what I thought. I knew she'd go right for the earthworm first. Now, uh, blue tongue skinks are often found in gardens, so they really like snails and earthworms and things like that. Snails are one of their main diets in the wild. Wow, she slurped that down. Like, she didn't even chew it. She's gone. <laughs> she liked that a lot. She seems very satisfied. <laughs> Ooh, that was a big gulp, licking them lips. And another big gulp. She's really licking her lips. All right, she's done. Nope, nope, another good lick. Never mind, she's not done. Hands in the food. She is just very content right now. We recently went to the vet and he was like, yeah, she's, she's a big one. <laughs> she's got a lot of food in that tummy, but he said that she's a really good weight and that she's super healthy, so that's good. What's she going for next? I feel like she's gonna finish off that meat before anything else. Looks like you got some in your nose. You're just sitting there. I'm about to move on to the next animal because this, is, this isn't this is good content. So unless you move on to some more food here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to move on from you. Which I know it's the last thing you want. You don't want any privacy. You want me to have a camera in your face while you're eating. Before people hate me for saying I put a camera in her face while she's eating, this is zoomed in. See, hold on, zooming out, zooming out. We are very far away from her. It's not in her face while she's eating. All right, now to move on to Twisty. Hey, Twisty, I see your eye, your eye in it. Here, you want me to hand feed you? <laughs> I guess he does not want that. Oh, maybe he does. It's right here. I'm really failing at this, I'm sorry. Worm. Worm. He looks so upset. You want some meat? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Eat that meat. There we go. <laughs> he looked so mad. I wish that was in focus when I was touching him with the worm. He was like, that is disgusting. There you go. There's more of that in here. If you would just come eat your food. Go for it, please. Please stop making me hand feed you. Look, there's more of the meat. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. Twisty. Really? This is ridiculous. All right, I'm not doing any more. You're gonna eat it yourself. Good talk. Now the glass is closed, so he knows I'm not coming back. He better eat it himself. He's staring right at me. He's like, you, you gonna, you gonna help me finish this? No, I'm not, Twisty. You're gonna finish it yourself. Don't look at me like that. Please feed and finish your own food, Twisty. <laughs> oh my God. Why is he a child? I, <laughs> I'm enabling. I'm honestly enabling. All right, we're gonna give him a hornworm. He does have like some blueberries on his mouth. That's what that rough looking stuff is. Oh, it's gone. Y'all didn't even get to see anything graphic. All right, so now we're back in Bindi's cage. Gonna see if she eats or not. She did eat pretty big meal last time I filmed this, which was yesterday. <laughs> But I'm gonna see if she wants some snail or anything like that. What are you going for? Get, get the worm. Oh, banana. Anytime I put bananas in there, it's always what she goes for first. Above meat, above the insects, she has to get banana first. There we go. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Do, 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 do. Now she's eating lettuce. Oh my goodness. I'm going to shut up because I can't sing. What is she doing? What is she doing? Bindi, what are you doing? She's yawn. Bindi, you can't scare me like that. I love you too much. Okay, she's fine. She's going back to eating. And then this is my crescent gecko. 
or not my crusty gecko, I'm sorry, my leopard gecko. I'm feeding her calcium, calcium dusted crickets. Oh, you got one. You're tough. You're so tough. Oh, she got another one. She's so tough. All right, I'm gonna close this so they don't keep jumping out. Okay, so over here are the rat dishes. Uh, this is just gonna be their main food, like the um, grain and the protein and all that, the um, blocks that are pre-mixed pre for them that you can buy at the store. And then this is gonna be their little salad, like their little treat. All right, so their main, you know, the essential part of their diet is this Oxbow adult rat food formula. And then this is their treats. They don't get it every single day, and especially not this much, but at least once or twice a week I like to give them a big blend of everything. This has fruits, veggies, and grains in it. So first I'm gonna put their main dish in and then we're gonna go get the treats and bring them in. You can tell they're very excited. <laughs> All right, so let's put the treat. <laughs> already grabbing pieces. And then we're gonna put one of the treat things down here. Pigeon's already getting something. They're all munching on something. And then I put their main course up here too. <laughs> Where is he bringing that? Oh, into his litter box. Perfect place to eat. I love to eat in the litter box. Perfect place. Prime snacking location. What? I don't know what's going on here, by the way. I just kind of walked right over that and didn't pay attention to it, but um, that's happening. It's good to be back in this house. All right, I guess they're all just somewhere snacking. Guess we'll move on to the next animal now. And while we're over here, I'm gonna go ahead and feed Mushu her earthworm. This is what I feed her every day. She gets at least one earthworm a day. Lately, she's been actually wanting about two earthworms a day. She's been hungry, but I just let it flop down and yeah, she eats it. All right, num num. She was so tiny when I got her and now she is so not tiny. <laughs> Ew, what if that was like her tongue? Ew. <laughs> Imagine that with you, if that was like her tongue and it came out, that'd be disgusting. Okay, anyway, let's let's move on. Let me let her uh, swallow that in peace. All right. All right, the next thing we have to feed is my fish tank. It is very blue right now, so I don't know how well it picks up on camera, but my fish tank is doing absolutely amazing. I don't know when the last time I showed it to you guys was, but everything is just so big and beautiful. These are some of my anemones. I had one and it ended up blossoming into, I think I have four now. Green star polyps, of course, went everywhere. That's what they tend to do. I have Xenia corals. I have a bunch of really cool mushrooms, some toadstools. I have a bunch of really cool corals, guys. That's a sea urchin right there. He actually likes to pick up corals that find its way on the ground and have them on his back. There's a few sets of corals on his back right now. My marine beta is actually showing himself right there, but of course he's right where there is a water stain on my glass. So I've had him for a very long time. I've had him for almost two years, I think, or no, over two years, well over two years now, and he will never show himself. They're notorious for hiding. Erwin, please get out of the way. Yeah, he's right where the glass is dirty, so yeah, I can't really get a clip of him. But anyway, all the fish are doing wonderful. My two little clown cowfish are getting nice and big. There's a starfish on the move right there. So they're the next thing I feed. I do frozen food and le uh, seaweed. I was about to say lettuce. So I've had this, the frozen food defrosting in some water. There we go. Now they're gonna eat. And then I give them a little while to eat all this. And then I come back and I give them some seaweed. There you go, Marwin. And that is how I feed my fish tank. The frozen food in which I use, I switch it up all the time so they can have a very, you know, varied diet and get all the nutrients they need. At night, I actually come on, come over here and turn on the sumps light so the refugium can get some light. Um, while I was in rehab, sadly, the grass in the refugium did die because I was not there to turn the light on. So I lost all of the, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? I'm not trying to say grass and I'm not trying to say plants. Macro algae, <laughs> it all died. So I am starting from scratch and only have like this much, but like it was filled to the brim. You couldn't even see in there. I had so much, but this light is amazing. So I really expect within a month to have it filled up already back how it was. So I leave that on at night and then these lights go off in about 30 minutes, and then they stay off at night while that light is on, and then we switch it in the morning. On to the next animal. Okay, so on the day I'm filming this, I actually already fed this little dude, but this is my crested gecko, and he gets, hold on, let me just show you guys. 
He gets this stuff. It's a fruit mush, basically. <laughs> you can find it online on Pangea's website. It's my favorite one for uh, crested geckos. And I just put it in there and let him come to it whenever he desires. I see his butt right there. <laughs> but, yep. That's how I feed him. These are my two hedgehogs. Um, I am trying to t currently figure out how to get them a better cage again. I had them in my display cages, and that was a 126-gallon tank, I believe, if I remember exactly. And it was really long, and since it was glass with some fans in the back, like little open vents, the open vents made the glass safe for the hedgehogs, so the ammonia from their poop and stuff doesn't ever just stand stagnant in the air. They actually can breathe very well with the little circulation that I did have in the glass enclosures. But the cool thing I liked about that is I could put live crickets in there and have them chase them, which was super cool. This little girl up here right now is a special needs hedgehog. She ended up having some really, really screwed up teeth, and they were the teeth that you need to uh in order oh wait no i'm showing you the wrong one that's ella they were the teeth that they used to chew so interesting fact when i feed her right now she's on carnivore diet which is a mush that you can get from the vet but it's 26 dollars a bag and every bag only has like maybe two weeks of servings in it so right now she's a very expensive hedgehog because she lost her chewing teeth she can only eat mushy objects so even her crickets and stuff you have to mush them up for her <laughs> another little fun fact i actually told my mom on the list of animals I wanted to be rehomed, I wanted these two to be rehomed because I did not think that they would be happy in my parents' home with their little tiny cages. But uh, my mom actually really, really, really loves my hedgehogs. I mean, I do too. My mom did not want to give them to the reptile rescue. While she did trust them with all my reptiles, he didn't know much about hedgehogs and she didn't want to give them away to a random person. So she ended up keeping them here. They are in the cage right now, but my mom said she does not mind if we do figure out a way to upgrade them uh, if I find the proper cage. So I'm gonna be looking for cages and then we're just gonna have to try to find space because right now I just don't like those cages for them. Okay, so I currently have the carnivore care in her food. Today I'm also gonna try a pate from Wellness and see if she likes it. It's one I haven't tried yet. Put it on the side so she doesn't have to eat it if she doesn't like it. And then put a multivitamin in there. And on the side, I'm gonna put a little bit of kale, which is a good source of calcium for them. I'm gonna get some crickets and mush them up for her. All right, so I got the, the juices that I got out of the cricket I put into her food, so now she could have that. But I left the big meaty parts over here for my other hedgehog. So now we're gonna make the other hedgehog's meal who does not have to have all this mushy stuff. So I'm gonna start with from, it's gold and it's a mature formula. The reason I'm doing mature is because it's less fatty and that's better for hedgehogs. I do, let's see, is this one tablespoon? Yeah, I do two tablespoons. And then I add some insects. And then we're gonna use some of the wet food too for her. She does like it. I don't do this every day, it's considered like a treat. I like to mix it up with the crickets, so if she for some reason isn't interested in them, it entices her more to eat them and get the insects in her diet. Put some fresh kale on there and pel bell peppers. Then I use broccoli too. And you could do it fresh, like raw, or you could do it cooked. This is it so far. And now I'm gonna do some carrots. The carrots, I like to cut them very fine because hedgehogs can easily choke on some on bigger pieces. As you can tell, there's a big difference between their two meals, but um, I can't help it. She can't eat this kind of stuff. And I'm gonna put the multivitamin on top of both of them. Hi, Ella. You wanna come eat? I made you a lot of good food. Come out and eat, baby. You're so cute, I love you. Why do you close one eye when you eat? <laughs> All right, I'll leave you alone to finish your meal. I just wanted to get a little clip of you. You no know food, I'm sorry you can't chew now, but I got you your mush. I got you your daily mush out here. I love you. I wish you could get hedgehog, uh, hedgehog dentures. I'd get you them, I'd get you some hedgehog dentures, even if they were 40 grand. You would at least thank me for it, right? Okay, so since right now I'm not feeding my cats anything impressive, I would love to switch them over to a raw diet, but I just haven't really looked into it yet since being back from rehab, but it's something I'm definitely gonna try out. Nemo actually has a urine, uh, like a UTI problem, a chronic one, where he has to be on food that 
caters to that. But I think raw food would actually help a lot. But I saw a video of a girl on my Twitter. I got some chicks in the mail as alternative food for my snakes and she actually showed me a video of her feeding her cats some whole live prey, which is something I have never thought to try before. So I thought for this video, just to make it a little entertaining, I would try to give them some whole live food. What do you think about that? What? What was that? Okay, anyway. All right, let's try this again. Let's try a small mouse. Let's do for Nemo. It's like, no. It's like, is this a toy? I don't know how to play with it. No? Okay. You want one, ghost? Oh, no, 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 don't get in there. Nope. <laughs> this is not gonna work. You can eat that. <laughs> His face! He looks so insulted. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> y'all would fail in the wild. Y'all would just starve. Alright, I'll put this in your food bowl and see if that changes things. <laughs> They're all just staring at it. Okay, this confirms that you were definitely a stray and that you weren't feral because- Oh, maybe? Possibly? <laughs> Do not put it on my bed. Do not slide it onto my bed. Thank you. Really, Star? Really? Nemo, you're getting interested? Okay, you can reach that. You can eat that. <laughs> I mean, they're all staring at it. They're all interested, but they don't want to, they don't know that they can eat it. You're scared of it? It's tiny. Oh no, I dropped it. <laughs> Where did it go? I expected them to be way more interested in it. <laughs> what is he doing? like he doesn't know how to touch it. He's so confused. <laughs> they both are. Oh my god. They cannot decide what to do with it. They, they cock their head like that. Ooh, scary. <laughs> they hate it. I'm so sorry, kittens. I will never put you through this again. He's so confused. <laughs> Imagine you are in the wild and you haven't eaten, and this little chick comes up to you. I'm a little chick. What do you do? <laughs> All right, good talk. So what's up with the fact that you are so interested in the birds outside and you chirp at them and you try to get them to come near you? It's a hunting tactic. But when I put a bird in your face, you are disturbed. What's what's up with that? What's up with the bird calls outside if you don't want the bird? This is what you asked for. Nemo, that is not a cat scratching post. That is a laundry hamper. Nemo, you're looking in the mirror. That's, that's you. That's a mirror. Nemo, that's you. No, there was no cat behind there. That's, that's you. There's no cat behind there, Nemo. That's you. Nemo! <laughs> don't worry, I'll never try to feed you whole life prey again. Okay, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the animals that I do currently still own in this video, you feel free to ask in the comment section. I like to get to know you guys just as much as I hope you guys get to know me. So out of all the animals you saw in this video, let me know which one was your favorite. And let me know if there's any videos you desire to see from me in the future. I do have a second channel that I'm going to be using a lot to talk about uh, addiction a lot of mental health help and just days in my life all this stuff so all the extra content for now is going on my second channel there may be some times where I put that content on the main channel if I find it to be a really important topic that I want all my viewers to see saying that like addiction and mental health isn't as important as talking about pets are because if anything that stuff is way more important but when I post it on this channel, a lot of people get annoyed and be like, where are the animals? So unless it's something crucial, I'm going to put it on the other channel. So if you'd like to subscribe to the other channel for all that cool new content, the link is in my description. And if you'd like to keep up with me in between videos, I do have a Twitter and Instagram with that same handle. I post a lot on Twitter and then I post 
like once a day on Instagram if I can. Sometimes I go a few days in between posting. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it's really good to be back and I love you guys and yeah. I will see you guys or nope, you will see me. That's just becoming the way I end every video. <laughs> I love you guys. Oop, I just hit my hand. Okay, goodbye. I love you. Bye.